felt very safe whilst I was in critical care. Um, it was a frightening. It was frightening when I when I came round from the coma because I I didn't really understand where I was and what what had happened. Although when it was explained to me. Um, I did feel very safe and I did feel that, that I was in the right place mm -hmm. with relation to recovering from from that. But then coming every half an hour and making sure I was okay and asking me if I was alright was was um was part of, of feeling safe. Getting them to switch my iPod on, which I couldn't do myself. Yeah. Although their choice in music wasn't particularly good, but uh, <laughs> Um, they, they did uh, did make me feel comfortable, and it was reassuring to see um, particular nurses that I'd I'd had caring for me over the period of time that I was there. So seeing familiar faces was very po very positive because um, I, I felt like I knew I was going to get looked after properly. Um, yeah. I think they, you know, I'm alive and, and they immediately took me back into theatre so um, they moved me f from being at death's door through to um, saving my life and the level of their care was incredible because it was all a shock, it wasn't something that they'd prepared for, it wasn't a serious operation and they had no idea why I was responding in the way that I was responding so it was very much hit and miss. At one point I felt that I was told that I had to um, wait to be moved or to be, uh, you know, I kept dropping things out of, out of the bed and things um, because there were other patients who were were not conscious who needed needed help more than I did. Now whether I imagine that or not, I don't know. Because throughout the time I was there, I felt like I was looked after. But I, I think it was a, a period where I wasn't sure I was being moved between ICU and HDU, and it, it was a bit confusing um, what was happening. When you're unconscious, you actually hear what's going on. I was aware of discussions about notes. I was aware of being washed. I was aware. I went for a um, scan and I thought I was dead and I was being buried. And, and um, there, I, I believe there isn't enough understanding of the unconscious person and what, what they believe is going on around them. However ill they are, near death or whatever stage they're at, it has to be impressed on them um, in terms of where they are, why they're there, what's happening to them. And every bit of handling needs to be dealt with as though that person is fully awake. Because although they don't appear to be, because their eyes are shut yeah. and their body functions might yeah. appear that they're unconscious, in my case, I wasn't unconscious. I, I was aware most of the time of what was going on around me. Challenges were mostly physical, I think, for me. Um, the the walk, I had a lot of pain in my knees for, for months and months, and um, I was just desperate for them to for it to go away. I, was... I think the greatest shock, apart from going completely mad was that um, physically I was I'd been in for what, I don't know three and a half weeks in total but two weeks in critical care and um, I couldn't wait bear mm -hmm. couldn't go up the stairs couldn't feed myself you know I remember wanting to scratch my nose and you know, couldn't do it and um, so physically it is a huge shock to suddenly be walking with a Zimmer at my age. I know there's plenty of people worse off. At that point, though, it's a big shock. And I went home highly motivated with a caring family. Um, but I couldn't 
do anything. Couldn't walk to the bottom of my path, couldn't get up the stairs unaided. Mm -hmm. I did, you know, eventually it picks up and, you know, that, it's not a worry because you, you continually improve, but I just feel that some follow-up would have been, would have made it better. Just being informed, just being, um, being aware of, you know, what's happening to you. I mean, I spent a lot of time not being able to sleep when I was in ICU because I was constantly worried about the, what was going on and the medication I was being given and whether they were giving it correctly and um, being used to having being medicated, you know, doing my own insulin and sugar levels and yeah. taking tablets for my epilepsy. You know, I was just, I couldn't, that was, you know, trying to let somebody else do it, constantly watching, but they were very patient with me about it. Um, and, uh, you know, they did talk to me. They did, the, the majority of the, the nursing staff did say, oh, you're doing much better, you look much better, or um, all of that combined m made, you know, made it less scary. It's... I'm aware that everybody does the best they can with the resources they have available, mm -hmm. medically, etc. But um, I think that you, your physical well-being sits in the context of your psychological well-being, mm -hmm. and they can save your life in one area to find that it's destroyed in another. Mm -hmm. So I think it, the two, if possible, need to go hand in hand.